Magandang tanghali po sa ating mga kababayan at sa Malacanang Press Corps. Ito po ang kauna-unahang press briefing natin para sa taong 2022. So before proceeding, let me first greet our friends in the media and our viewers a Happy New Year. Hindi na po tayo magpaligoy-ligoy. While we welcome the new year with optimism, the reality on the ground is that the country is now at high risk classification due to the rising number of COVID cases. Nitong huling linggo ng Disyembre, patuloy na nakapagtala ng pagtaas ng bilang ng mga kaso ng COVID-19. Nasa bansa na ang Omicron na apat na beses na mas nakakahawa kumpara sa Delta variant. Dahil dito, ulitin po natin na dapat isa puso ang mask, hugas, iwas, ventilation, at bakuna. Iwasan din natin ang super spreader events tulad ng Pista ng Itim na Nazareno, Pista ng Santo Nino, Sinulog Festival, Dinagyang Festival, at Chinese New Year. Manatili na lamang sa pamamahay para iwas sakit at iwas hawaan. Umpisa natin ang briefing sa highlights ng sinagawang Talk to the People kagabi. Inatasan ni Pangulong Rodrigo Roa Duterte si Secretary Eduardo Anyo na mag-assign ng police personnel sa mga quarantine hotels. Dagdag ng Pangulo, kailangan may complete authority to inquire ang nagbabantay ng mga police para ma-monitor ang compliance sa quarantine rules. This is being done in order to prevent those who may attempt to violate the quarantine regulations that have been put in place to protect our population from COVID. Umapela, umapela ang Pangulo. Umapela ang Pangulo sa mga Katoliko sa kanilang pangunawa sa mga hakbang na gagawin ng pamahalaan para maprotektahan ang public health at public safety kaugnay sa pagdiriwang ng Feast of the Black Nazarene na maituturing na isang posibleng super spreader event dahil sa dami ng dumadalo dito. Kasama rito ang pagkansela ng mass gatherings tulad ng traslasyon o Black Nazarene procession at pagmimisa sa loob ng simbahan. Kaugnay nito, inaprubahan ng National Task Force Against COVID-19 ang pagsuspinde ng traslasyon o ang prosesyon ng imahe ng itim na Nazareno. Ang pagsasara ng Minor Basilica of the Black Nazarene of the Quiapo Church mula Biyernes hanggang January mula Biyernes January 7 hanggang Linggo January 9, 2022. Inaprubahan din ng NTF ang pagsasagawa ng online masses. Walang physical holy masses na magaganap. Kasama rin sa inaprubahan ang paglalagay ng checkpoints at deployment ng officers mula sa Manila Police District at Joint Task Force Coronavirus Shield para ma-discourage ang mga deboto sa pagtipon-tipon sa simbahan. Samantala, inatasan ng Pangulo ang National Bureau of Investigation na imbestigahan ang mga kaso ng posibleng paglabag ng quarantine protocols na pinapatupad ng pamahalaan mula pagdating sa airport hanggang sa facility, hotel o bahay. Inirekomenda naman kagabi ni Presidential Advisor on COVID-19 Response and Testing Czar. Secretary Vivencio Vince Dizon sa Talk to the People address na i-adopt nationwide ang Metro Manila Council Resolution na i-restrict ang movement ng unvaccinated ng unvaccinated kasama ang mga lugar na wala pang surge. Kaugnay nito, naglabas ng memorandum ang Regional Task Force COVID-19 ng Calabarzon na naglilimita sa paggalaw ng unvaccinated individuals. Hinihikayat ng RTF Calabarzon 
ang lahat ng local task forces sa region na i-adapt ang nasabing resolution. Sa usaping bakuna naman, nasa mahigit 110 million ang total doses administered as of January 4, 2022, ayon sa National COVID-19 Vaccination Dashboard. Nasa 79.42% naman ng target population or 61,260,924 ang nakatanggap ng first dose samantalang nasa 65.63% ng ating target population ang fully vaccinated. Let me again reiterate to our unvaccinated kababayans. Tara na at magpabakuna. Huwag na itong ipagpaliban, lahat ng bakuna ay ligtas, epektibo at libre po. Vaccines are free and have been proven to be safe and effective. The numbers clearly show how these can prevent serious cases of COVID. 85% po ng COVID patients sa ating ICUs or intensive care units ay mga unvaccinated. Kaya malaking tulong ang bakuna para maprotektahan kayo laban sa COVID-19 at ang mga variant nito. Malinaw po ang ebidensya. Ito ang ating pinakamabisang armas kontra COVID-19. Sa mga fully vaccinated na, ischedule nyo na po ang booster shots ninyo para sa dagdag proteksyon. There are supplies available so much so that there are now even LGUs that offer booster shots to non-residents. Pumunta naman po tayo sa COVID-19 update. Ayon sa January 4, 2022 COVID-19 case bulletin ng DOH or Department of Health, nasa 5,434 ang bagong kaso ng COVID sa bansa. habang nasa 26.5% ang ating positivity rate. At habang patuloy ang pagtaas ng mga kaso, dapat doble po ang gawing pag-iingat. Lalo sa mga pumapasok sa trabaho, ugaliin na mag-ingat buhay para sa hanap buhay. Iwasan nating magtipon sa mga three C's, yung mga closed spaces, yung mga crowded spaces, at yung mga close contact settings. Kung hindi ito may iwasan, kagaya ng pagsakay sa public transportation, tiyakin natin na naka-full face mask po tayo. Iwasan din ang pagkikwentuhan habang kumakain during lunch break or during merienda break. Mas safe po kumain ng hiwa-hiwalay. Kaya kanya-kanya muna tayong kain, mga kababayan. Now, for other data, nasa 97.2% ang porsyento ng gumaling nasa mahigit 2.77 million na po ang nakarecover. Ngunit, malungkot naman namin binabalita sa inyo na kahapon po ay merong labing walo ang naidagdag sa bilang ng mga pumanaw dahil sa coronavirus. Nasa 1.8% ang ating fatality rate at ito ay nananatiling mas mababa sa 2% global average. Ngayon, kung may concern or emergency kayo na related sa COVID-19, maaari ninyong tawagan ang mga sumusunod na hotline na naka-flash po sa inyong mga screen. Ayan po. Pakitake note po ng mga numbers at hotline numbers for COVID-19 sa inyong mga lugar at nandyan din po ang ating One COVID Referral Center. Bukas sa mga linya 24-7 para i-assist kayo sa inyong medical needs. As for other data, tumaas po ang ating hospital care utilization rate. Nasa 35% na po ang utilized ICU beds natin sa Metro Manila, habang nasa 26% naman sa buong bansa. 
32% ang utilized isolation beds natin sa Metro Manila habang nasa 27% sa buong bansa. 36% po ang utilized ward beds sa Metro Manila habang 19% sa buong bansa. 20% naman ang utilized ventilators sa Metro Manila habang 14% siya sa buong bansa. On the economic front, Alpha Southeast Asia Investment Magazine recognized the Philippines Stock Exchange as best stock exchange in Southeast Asia for 2021. Congratulations po to all those who worked the past year to make this possible. Congratulations to to Banco Central ng Pilipinas, Governor Benjamin Jokno, for being awarded Central Banker of the Year 2022 by the prestigious The Banker. To quote The Banker, Governor Jokno has helped to see the Philippines through the COVID-19 pandemic and pushed ahead with his modernization agenda for the country's banking System. Good job, Governor Jokno, and congratulations. The Bureau of Customs, meanwhile, collected 645.77 billion pesos in 2021. This figure exceeded pre pandemic collection of 630.21 billion pesos in 2019. And so we commend the officials and personnel of the BOC for a job well done. Samantala, bumaba naman po ang ating inflation mula 4.2% nung Nobyembre 2021 patungong 3.6% nitong Disyembre 2021. Bunsod ng pagbaba ng presyo ng isda at gulay. Ito ang pinakamababang inflation na naitala sa taong 2021. Dito po nagtatapos ang ating opening statement. Makakasama naman na po natin ngayon ang isang kilalang health expert, si Dr. Edsel Salvania, para pag-usapan ang uh, Omicron variant at iba pang usapin tungkol sa ating COVID-19. Nandito rin po ang isa pa nating guest, si DILG Undersecretary Jonathan Malaya, para naman bigyan tayo ng updates sa status ng financial assistance para po sa ating mga kababayan na naging biktima ng bagyong Odette. So, shall we start with uh, Dr. Edsel Salvania from UPPGH. Doc Edsel, any updates on uh, nung babantayan natin dito sa uh, Omicron variant and yung pagtaas po ng bilang ng COVID sa ating bansa? Uh, good morning, uh and uh, Kabsek, um and good morning to everyone. Happy New Year po. Uh, nandito na naman po tayo. Medyo tumataas na naman ang ating cases. Uh, but the interesting thing is, and I've been talking to yung mga colleagues ko dito sa hospital, uh, marami dito sa ating cases are mild. And I think this is also because marami na po talaga tayong nabakunahan. Uh, it's possible rin nga na nandito yung Omicron. Uh, and that is associated with milder symptoms. Bagamat uh, meron pa rin talaga siyang uh, magkakaroon ng severe, pwede pa rin mamatay, lalong-lalo na dun sa mga hindi po nabakunahan. So we expect nga na mabilis talaga pagkalat nitong Omicron. Uh, nakita natin sa United States, uh, lalampas halos isang milyon na sila sa isang araw. Pero the good news is, uh, yun nga, mukhang karamihan dito, lalo na dun sa mga nabakunahan na, are mild. And the important thing po talaga is uh, uh, pagpatuloy po natin yung ating vaccination program and we continue to wear masks and ating minimum public health standards. Thank you, Doc Edsel. So what we want to emphasize again is to get the unvaccinated vaccinated. Kasi uh, ayun, ayun yung sinabi mo, Doc Edsel, no? yung mga mild na cases na nakikita natin are from vaccinated. No, we can't. We cannot say the same thing about unvaccinated. So, kung unvaccinated ka, hindi po mangyayari yung sinasabi yung Omicron ay magiging mild. That only happens if you're fully vaccinated. Tama po ba, Doc Edsel? 
At tama po yun, Kabsek, nakita naman natin ang people in the hospital is 85% unvaccinated and uh, yung mga namamatay is about 93% unvaccinated. Uh, bagamat yun nga, uh, may mga Omicron na pwede pa rin maging severe, we see this more uh, in those people who are unvaccinated by a lot talaga. Um, and yung mga namamatay, 10 to 20 times yung risk nila mamatay, whether it's Delta or Omicron, compared to those who are fully vaccinated. Yes. And the second point also is even if you are fully vaccinated, kailangan iwasan pa rin natin yung Omicron because we do not want to overwhelm our healthcare capacities. And when we talk about healthcare capacities, we're also talking about our healthcare workers. Diba? Because in fact, we also have healthcare workers who are now isolating themselves, quarantining themselves because they've been exposed or have gotten um, ha have gotten the, the disease. No? Uh, sila ay naging positive din. So ayaw rin po natin na mataas ang hawaan kasi ayaw rin po natin ma-overwhelm ang ating healthcare capacities. And that most importantly uh, involves not getting our healthcare workers overwhelmed with so much work and cases that they have to take care of. Tama po ba, Dr. Edsel? Yes, tama po yun, Kabsek. Actually, dito nga sa hospital namin, sa isang hospital na tinatrabahuhan ko, I go to two other hospitals, 27 po yung nagkasakit na healthcare workers. All of them are vaccinated, pero po lahat are mild. But the problem is, they're out of circulation. So, hirap po talaga yung mga natitira. And uh, yun nga, even if... Uh, mild nga yun na lumalabas, may impact rin po ito sa ating workforce and mas mahihirapan po talaga tayo alagaan, uh, lalo na yung mga kinakailangan ng uh, medical attention na may mga severe and also yung mga non-COVID na kailangan po talagang i-hospital. So please help us mga healthcare workers po kami um, kahit po mahawa kami uh, most likely mild pero malaki po talaga yung impact sa capacity natin na alagaan ng ating mga kababayan na kinakailangan i-hospital. Thank you. And the third point also, Dr. Edsel, and this was discussed uh, kagabi no, sa Talk to the People, let's take advantage of increasing the vaccination in the regional areas. No, uh, While we're seeing a surge here in Metro Manila at yung mga kalapit na mga probinsya dito, we have to push for more vaccinations happening in the other regions outside of uh, Metro Manila and Calabarzon. Tama po yun, Kabsek, kasi kung titingnan po natin, even though ang taas nung pag-increase nung cases, ang yung severe and critical uh, is actually pretty flat. And yung the reason why tumataas talaga ng todo-todo yung ating healthcare utilization is because nag admit pa rin kahit papano ng mild and moderate eh, uh, when in fact we can do home isolation or we can do uh, facility-based sa mga PTMFs natin na hindi naman kailangan yung level of care na ginagawa sa hospital. So we have to triage properly. And of course, dun sa regions na mababa pa yung vaccination rate, uh, we really have to catch up. We have to use this time para kung tumama na sa kanila itong Omicron wave, uh, magiging mild pa rin kagaya nung nangyayari dito so far sa Metro Manila. Yes. So we'd like to emphasize again no, that in Metro Manila, the reason why um, we're, we're seeing what we're seeing, meaning to say hospital care utilization is not increasing as steeply as, um, as the cases are rising is because uh, karamihan ng mga kababayan natin sa NCR are fully vaccinated. In fact, doing boosters already. We cannot say the same thing sa ibang mga regions. No? We're seeing sa Metro Manila, 90%, 100% na uh, vaccinated hindi yan the same vaccination rate that we're seeing in other regions. So we need to step up yung vaccination in other regions so that if Omicron or whatever variant goes uh, and is spread dun sa mga regions, that we won't see an overwhelming uh, number of uh, cases happening in the hospitals. Yes po, tama po, Kabset. Uh, very important to use whatever time we have left uh, to protect as many people as possible. And we continue to protect everyone and also yung healthcare workers po natin, supportahan po natin lagi. Thanks, Dr. Edsel. Please stay on board for uh, questions from the media. Let's now go to Undersecretary Jonathan Malaya of the ILG to talk about uh, yung pagpamamahagi po natin, uh, Yusek, ng uh, tulong sa mga um, severely affected uh, nung Typhoon Odette. Yes, magandang uh, hapon po, uh, Kabsek Carlo Nograles at sa lahat po ng ating taga-subaybay and the members of the Malacanian Press Corps. 
uh, yes sir, magbibigay lang po tayo ng uh, konting ulat tungkol sa uh, updates, tungkol sa pamimigay ng ayuda sa ating mga kababayan na dubhang naapektuhan ng Typhoon Odette. Uh, meron lang po tayong uh, konting slides, dalawang slides na ipapakita. Uh, may I just request na ma-flash po ito sa ating mga screen. So, uh, makikita po natin uh, sa ating screen ngayon yung uh, timeline ng ating uh, pamimigay ng ayuda uh, sa ating mga kababayan. Uh, okay. Yes. So, makikita po natin sa timeline na yan na nagsimula tayo nung uh, December 29 ay uh, nag-issue ng uh, local budget circular ang uh, D ang DBM para sa pag-release ng pondo uh, para sa mga nasalanta ng uh, Typhoon Odette. At immediately thereafter, the next day on December 30, ay nagkaroon din ng uh, pagpipirma and release of the Joint Memorandum Circular uh, ng DILG, ng DSWD, at ng Department of National Defense. At dito po sa Joint Memorandum Circular na ito, uh, na ilagay natin yung lahat ng guidelines na kailangan sundin ng ating uh, mga implementing agencies for the distribution of the ayuda. Okay? So, kumpleto na po lahat ng guidelines on the part of the uh, national government. At uh, ang inaantay na lang po natin is, of course, yung uh, distribution ng pondo nito sa ating mga kababayan. So, uh, as of uh, Monday, um, we checked with the different LGUs at uh, na tinggap na po nila yung pondong nang gagaling sa local nang gagaling sa national government so nasa kamay na po ng mga LGUs ang pondong ito at nagsagawa po tayo ng orientation no regarding the distribution para maipaliwanag sa mga local government units kung ano yung mga pamantayang kanilang kailangan sundin sa pamimigay ng ayuda at binigyan po natin ng 15 days uh, mula sa pagsisimula ng kanilang pamimigay, ang mga LGUs na tapusin at kumpituhin yung uh, distribution nito sa kanilang mga kababayan. So, ito po yung ilan sa mga uh, guidelines natin. Again, it's uh, 1,000 uh, to every qualified individual, maximum 5,000 per family. At ang mga target beneficiaries po natin are yung mga low income and severely affected individuals sa iba't ibang uh, uh, local government units. At yung uh, listahan po ng mga eligible beneficiaries na siyang uh, gagawa nito ay ang local government unit ay kailangan po ay mapost sa social media or kung wala kuryente pa rin hanggang ngayon sa lugar na yun ay kahit i-post la sa, sa mga uh, conspicuous places na tinatawag sa barangay o sa munisipyo bago magsimula ang pamimigay. At uh, meron din po tayong uh, creation or pagtatalaga ng isang grievance and appeals committee sa level ng local government unit para maaksyonan kung meron mang mga reklamo sa ating mga kababayan. At uh, dahil na rin po sa kautusan ng ating Pangulo na tumulong ang Philippine National Police and Armed Forces of the Philippines na magbigay ng additional manpower ay nagbigay na rin po ng uh, kautusan si Secretary Anyo sa Philippine National Police sa lahat ng rehiyon apektado ng bagyong Odet na magtalaga ng karagdagang uh, personnel kung kinakailangan para maghatid ng tulong sa mga malalayong lugar. Next slide. So ito naman pong uh, susunod na slide. Ito naman po yung uh, budget na naibaba na natin sa iba't ibang uh, munisipyo at lungsod na lubhang naapektuhan ng bagyong Odette. So sa Mimaropa sa Mira, Mimaro pa po, meron tayong tatlong probinsya and 21 uh, municipalities na napadalhan ng uh, pondong pinansyal mula sa national government for a total of 198 million. Sa Western Visayas naman po ay meron tayong anim na probinsya for a total of 1.6 billion. Sa Central Visayas naman po, meron tayong apat na probinsya uh, for a total of one, almost uh, more than 1 billion. 
sa Eastern Visayas, meron po tayong apat na probinsya for uh, 964 uh, million naman po. And Northern Mindanao, limang probinsya, 156 million ang ating ibinaba doon. At sa Karaga, uh, limang probinsya, 864 million. So ang kabuuan pong pondo na ibaba ng ating national government, ng BBM, diretso sa mga local government units ay 4.8 billion. At uh, na, 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 nasimulan na rin pong uh, ma-activate ang mga joint monitoring and inspection committees na pinangangunahan ng DILG kasama po ang DSWD, ang uh, Philippine National Police at ang Department of Justice. Sa bawat LGU, meron po kaming ganoon at Malapit na rin po magsimula yung monitoring and inspection na gagawin ng DILG at DSWD sa mga LGUs para masiguro po na makarating ang tulong pinansyal na ito in cash sa ating mga kababayan na nangangailangan ng tulong sa lalong madaling panahon. Yun lamang po at maraming salamat po muli, Kapsek Carlo Nogales. Maraming maraming salamat, Undersecretary Malaya. So let's now proceed to Yusek Rocky for questions from the media. Uh, thank you, uh, Sec. Carlo. Good afternoon din po sa MPC at sa ating mga guests ngayong araw. Yung una pong tanong ni MJ Blanca Flor ng Tribune ay uh, na, na, na presenta niyo na po, uh, Secretary, about the, dun sa pagiging high risk ng Pilipinas sa COVID-19. Ang second question po niya, may we requ request the palace to comment on the PDP Laban petition asking the COMELEC to reopen the COC filing. What are PR, uh, President Duterte's uh, thoughts on the petition? Will he endorse a presidential aspirant who is a non-member of the party? Well, I cannot comment on that, um, especially uh, uh, in this podium, no? uh, because uh, reports, as per reports from the media, uh, that petition is being heard or will be heard by the COMELEC today. So no comment po from the palace. And then uh, with regard to sa uh, high risk uh, classification yes um, based on our metrics and our parameters uh, any territory na mag-experience ng greater than 200% two week growth rate ay uh, ilalagay po natin sa high risk classification and unfortunately for the entire country although uh, most of it is uh, makikita natin sa NCR plus areas, uh, tumama na po tayo to more than 200%. In fact, by the account of um, Secretary uh, Duque in the Talk to People kagabi, sinabi po niya, uh, we are 448% po ang ating two-week growth rate. So, patuloy po ang panawagan natin dun sa mask, hugas, iwas, plus bakuna, and in workplaces and business establishments, uh, public places, uh, good, better, best ventilation, kung marit, the best type of ventilation that you can, uh, let's, let's also uh, be uh, mindful of that. Apo. Ang third question mula po kay Samy Danila ng Business Mirror, uh, reaction daw po ng pala sa pag-drop kay EJ Obiana from uh, the National Pool of Athletes by uh, Pataka. We continue to support all of our athletes, including our star pole vaulters, EJ Obiana. Um, and we hope that uh, whatever uh, disagreements that he may have uh, or between uh, EJ and the uh, Philippine Athletics Track and Field uh, Association, hopefully they will all be threshed out. Now, for the allegations of... Uh, fund misuse and other al such allegations. Uh, documents, we have been told, have already been sent to the Philippine Sports Commission and the Commission on Audit. So let us await uh, further development in that regard or if they will uh, issue a statement on that matter. Thank you, Sec. Carlo. Thank you. Let's go to Mela Les Moras of PTV. 
Hi, good afternoon, Secretary Nograles at sa ating mga panauhin. Secretary Nograles, unahin ko lang po yung alert level system. Since uh, yun nga alert level 3 na ang NCR at iba pang mga karatig probinsya, bilang proactive measure at parang habang hindi pa talaga kumakalat yung Omicron uh, variant sa buong Pilipinas, are we eyeing or napag-uusapan na po ba sa IATF na isa ilalim na rin yung buong bansa sa alert level 3 or mas mataas pa na alert level? When we look at our decision matrix uh, ng alert level system po natin, very clear po no, ang tinitingnan natin. We're looking at the two-week growth rate. Then we look at yung ADAR or average daily attack rate. That's how many cases per 100,000 population. No? And then after that, we, took, we look at healthcare utilization rate. So dun po sa met matrix na yan, makikita po natin kung anong uh, alert level ang dapat nating uh, uh, i-classify ang isang lugar, probinsya. Um, so, yun yung ating ano, yun yung ating decision matrix na sinusundan. Hindi yung buong bansa agad, no? So, it, kami sa IATF, we will not hesitate na pag ang isang probinsya, halimbawa, ay tumama doon sa mga parameters natin for alert level 3, then we will do it. That has been um, that has been the uh, kumbaga, protocol and procedure ng, ng IATF. Gaya ng sinabi namin, we will give the general alert level system uh, classification every 15 days. So ngayon, yung January 1 to 15. But anytime we need to escalate the alert level for any province, we will do it. Which is what we did. No? For NCR, and then later on uh, dito sa Cavite, Rizal, and Bulacan. Meron pa tayong ibang mga probinsya na tinitingnan. No? Tinitingnan namin yung kung tatama siya dun sa parameters for alert level 3. Again, ayokong pangunahan ang IATF, but binabantayan namin no? uh, based on the, the numbers. Um, and anytime that we feel that, uh, well, anytime na tumama siya sa parameters for alert level 3 or higher, then we will immediately escalate. Opo. And uh, since mas nakahawa itong uh, uh, COVID-19 ngayon, mas tumataas na naman yung uh, numero ng kaso, may mga ilang government workers lang, uh, CAPSEC, na nagtatanong kung uh, napapanahon na rin ba at may chance sa bang maibalik din yung hazard pay for government workers? Well, let's remember that uh, when uh, that was decided upon, uh, we were under ECQ, no? And uh, I believe MECQ din, na-cover din. Uh, that was when yung malawakang lockdowns were being done. We have thus, since then, shifted to alert level system. The highest of which is alert level system 5. So, wala pa naman tayong lugar na ina-alert level system 5. And that being said, ayoko rin pangunahan, no? Ano yung magiging decision ng uh, Pangulo or ng Office of the President with regard to that uh, that question no so uh, let's uh, let's continue to monitor whatever developments there are but again this is not something that we would wish to happen and when i say that it's not just government hindi lamang ang inyong national government hindi lamang ang LGUs gaya ng sinasabi ko at sinasabi natin parati it's a shared responsibility now that we're in alert level 3 uh, for metro manila uh, cavite uh, Rizal and uh, Bulacan, I think that is a signal to all of us to be extra, extra careful, extra, extra vigilant. And ang target dapat natin is not to elevate it even higher. And as much as possible, avoid that other areas become elevated as well. No? So, yun ang target natin. Yun ang objective po nating lahat. Opo. At panghuli na lamang, Kabsek, uh, sa mga aktividad lang ni Pangulong Duterte, may mga inaasahan pa po ba tayong mga aktividad niya o pupuntahang lugar? At sa Talk to the People kasi, sabi po niya, dadalawin niya ulit ngayong January yung mga naapektuhan ng Typhoon o death, bibisitahan niya ulit. Makakaapekto po ba yung tumataas na COVID-19 cases sa movement ni Pangulong Duterte? Tuloy-tuloy pa rin po ba itong mga aktividad na ito? Well, obviously, first and foremost, uh, we need to protect no uh, the President, no? Um, yung kanyang safety, ang kanyang health, di ba? 
So, nandun naman yung mga protocols uh, and procedures na ginagawa. So, as much as possible, we have to ensure, while ensuring his safety and his health, uh, we also do not want to limit um, his movements, especially kung gusto niyang bumisita rin. Uh, sa mga lugar, gaya ng sinabi niya kagabi, um, bumisita muli sa mga naapektuhan ng Typhoon Odette. At yung iba pang mga activities na gusto rin gawin ni Pangulo, no? uh, as, as he is known to be very active, a uh, very active president uh, and he wants to be always on the ground he always wants to be with people so uh, we're putting the necessary protocols to protect him while as much as possible not limiting what he wants to do so that he can effectively govern as our chief executive uh, so the schedules uh, tingnan po natin narinig natin kagabi no na gusto niyang bumisita muli sa mga lugar na tinamaan ng typhoon odette and uh, we are currently um Kumbaga, planning his uh, schedule. Okay. Maraming salamat po, Kabsek Nagralas, at sa ating mga panauhin. Maraming salamat, Mela. Let's go back to Yusek Rocky. Yes, thank you, ah. Uh, uh, Sir Carlo, yung tanong po ni Lenes Kapanti ng GMA News Online, uh, na tanong na po ni Mela Les Moras. Ang second question niya, uh, would like to ask Palas comment on this. Uh, CHR will pursue all creation of human rights Institute via legislation reaction daw po ng Palace. Yes, um, by by all means, um, if they want to pursue legislation, then let them do so. Um, I just like to point out din kasi na there was a reaction um, about uh, bakit na hindi siya na isama dun sa no sa budget no. Um, may I um, may I may I state that uh, the reason being is that as per DBM, uh, inclusion of projects in the national budget budget assumes first yung project readiness. No? Secondly, that uh, may complete estimates on costing, uh, complete details on manpower and manning requirements. Um, and then of course, tinitingnan din po ng DBM yung budget utilization uh, ng agency. Uh, at tinitingnan din po kung it was requested in the first place. Uh, meron tayong budget call na sinasagawa. Dapat dun po sa budget call pa lamang ay nire-request na po ito. But if uh, pinapasok or ini-insert sa budget, uh, but if it is deemed a rider, then we do not want riders uh, in the budget because the budget, as with any law, pinagbabawalan po yung mga riders. So it's much better if they pursue legislation separately from a national budget. Okay. That being said, uh, I'd also like to point out that uh, under the administration of President Duterte, the CHR's budget no, has uh, been more than doubled. If you look at the records, from 439 million peso budget, um, by the preceding administration in year 2016, the budget of the Commission on Human Rights has enjoyed annual increases since then. And so much so that the CHR's budget for 2021 was at 907 uh, million pesos. So it's been enjoying an increase in their budget annually since the start of the Duterte administration. Opo. Uh... Uh, Secretary Carl, uh, Carlo, itanong ko na lang po muna yung tanong ni Joe Montemayor uh, asking for confirmation na Laguna daw po is now under alert level 3 any other areas po that are now under new alert level? We will be making the announcements. No, It goes through a process. Uh, IATF has to decide. I, IATF uh, by its very nature is interagency. So dadaan po muna yan sa IATF and then we will make the proper announcements. Uh, as of the moment, I have nothing yet to announce. Uh, as per any development on uh, any alert level system, so hintay na lang po natin na uh, I or the IATF uh, makes the proper announcement. Opo. Tanong po ni Rose na binaryo ng hataw, pahihintulutan na ba ang pamahalaan yung pagbabalik ng ruta ng ibang bus at jeep upang hindi mahirapan ng commuters at hindi magsiksikan daw po sa limitadong public transport para maiwasan ang pagkalat ng COVID-19, hindi ba nakikita ng IATF 
na super spreader ang uh, pinagdaraan ng kalbaryo ng mga obrero araw-araw para lamang makapasok sa trabaho at makauwi sa kanilang pamilya. As per DOTR, no? um, the, uh, their report uh, sa atin, sa IATF din, na sa jeepney routes in Metro Manila, uh, operational na po ang more than 85% ng jeepney routes in Metro Manila. Ang railway lines po natin, 100% operational na po. Uh, mas mabilis na rin po yung intervals uh, ng mga tren natin ng MRT3 uh, dahil mas bago po at mas napabilis na rin po ang takbo ng mga tren natin. No? Um, and remember, the DOTR announced also that we have increased um, public transportation capacity to 70%. 70% na po. Uh, that being said, uh, ang LTL, LTO, LTFRB, MMDA, and our Philippine National Police um, continue to do everything to ensure that lahat ng mga health protocols sa ating mga public transportations ay lahat na susunod. No? Uh, with regard to ano naman, uh, bus terminals, uh, which I think is one of the, the, question, the concerns ng ating riding public, that is something that is being actively debated upon and discussed in the IATF. Uh, meron tayong sub-technical working group that is also concentrating on that concern. At hintayin na lang po natin no, ano yung maging uh, decision ng IATF on that matter. Thank you, Secretary Carlo. Thank you, Yusak Rocky. Let's now go to Trish Terada ng CNN. Hi, good afternoon, Sec Carlo, and to our guests, to Sec Rocky as well. Sir, dun lang po muna ko, first uh, question could be about testing. Because um, ngayon nga po, dumadami yung cases. So, how does the government intend to ramp up or improve po yung testing capacity natin? Will the IATF push for yung recommendation po ni Dr. Wong to expand the use of um, home use? Or encouraging, he's encouraging the use of home use of antigen and um, in a way, pinagtitignan din po ba natin yung lower COVID testing prices? Yes. Um, so, uh, under the discussion, uh, the current discussion right now, uh, in the, even in the IATF and with our health experts, is uh, a wider use of testing. Um, and we'll, we'll also need um, FDA also to chime in on that. No? Um, as, as far as using um, home test kits, what home test kits ang papayagan ng FDA, uh, kailangan may mag-apply din for home test kits, um, what sort of parameters um, pwedeng pumasa um, batay sa uh, FDA no? uh, at sa pagsusuri ng ating mga health experts. No? Uh, wider use of um, antigen. Uh, and of course, the gold standard will continue to be RT-PCR. Uh, so now with this Omicron variant um, and as many other countries have been looking then at home test kits. It's also something that uh, we are also looking at. Uh, let's, maybe we can ask also uh, Dr. Ed Salvania to chime in because he, he's, our, uh, he's our health expert here. Dr. Ed Sel. Thank you, Krabcek. Yes, thank you, Krabcek. Yeah, I mean, the antigen tests are good, lalo na yung home-administered ones because then you don't have to go out and uh, potentially infect other people when you have symptoms. Uh, but um, you know we'll we'll do all these. But the most important thing, talaga, that you can do when you are symptomatic, uh, especially if you only have mild symptoms and you're fully vaccinated, mababa naman yung risk na uh, you're gonna have severe symptoms. Is really to stay put and not infect anybody else. Um, home isolate. If you need testing, uh, there are uh, there are labs that do home testing, and there are some LGUs that do home testing as well. So if you're having difficulty getting a test or ubud ng haba ng pila. Uh, the other option, if you only have mild symptoms, is to, to do telemedicine, uh, try to get tested at home so that you don't expose anybody. And if you really can't get a test but you have symptoms, just isolate for 10 days um, para wala na tayong ibang mahawahan. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll do our best to really test, but the numbers are really staggering right now. Eh? Even the U.S. is having huge backlogs among their states because so many people have symptoms. And, uh, you know, whether you're tested or not naman, if you're fully vaccinated, chances are it's going to go away on its own. And you just have to watch out for the warning signs. And, of course, there's a lot of telemed available and, of course, the DOH hotline. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Salvaisor. Just uh, a question for you because we're seeing reports 
of several people getting sick and nag- meron din pong reports na nagkakaubusan daw po at least ng mga branded na go to um treatments for um flu or for whatever sickness we have common sickness that we have where do we attribute um this seeming increasing number of people getting sick and how are we going to how how do we know if we should get tested already paano po natin siya ma may differentiate from a regular flu or kung possibly covid ano na tayo candidate sir yeah that's really the problem eh there's really no good differentiation among the symptoms and in fact 40% of omicron is going to be asymptomatic so that's why if you have exposure better to quarantine if you have symptoms better to isolate um uh, it's important you know you can have symptomatic relief the symptomatic relief is is great for being able to sleep because uh, but you know they're, they're not antivirals so they're not going to add much in terms of how fast you're going to get better or not you know there are generic equivalents a lot of people like branded kasi but you know paracetamol's been around for uh, tens and tens of years so you know it's not like it's a new drug so the other the other generic equivalents as long as they're FDA cleared are just fine um but i think the important thing talaga is again yung isolation because when we expose people Um, you know, just because you don't have a test doesn't mean you can't get people sick, other people sick. And it is flu season, and you know, we had a lot of people go around uh, during the holidays. So whether it was COVID or kung flu lang or even sipon ubo, the dami talaga bigla yan kasi people were more mobile. So right now, the cases are high in the community and we know it's circulating. The best thing to do talaga if you have symptoms is to stay home. If you can get a test, great. If you can't get a test, as long as it's just mild symptoms, uh, just stay home para wala na po kayong ibang mahawa. Thank you, Dr. Silvania. Sir, I'll just go back to um, Sir Carlo. Sir, paano po natin uh, plan i-address yung problem sa cost ng testing? Because um, it appears sa mga reports din po that a lot of people are hesitant to get tested dahil namamahalan pa rin po sa COVID testing. And at the same time, yung iba takot naman magpa-test at takot na malaman na may COVID-19 sila. So maybe those two things, the cost and the fear of the people, how are how does the government intend to address that? I think we should listen to our doctors and our health experts. no. So again, uh, just to remind, um, if you feel symptoms, symptomatic, uh, then the best thing to do is to isolate immediately. no. Isolate immediately, let's, let's assume that it's COVID. Um, then, of course, for testing, uh, we can always ask the help of the LGUs. No, we we were, con- we're constantly also um, coordinating with the LGUs, and the LGUs are the ones on the ground. Um, at sinabi, sinasabi naman po namin na pag ano naman pag symptomatic at kailangan itest, iko cover naman ng field health yan. And then the LGUs also they have their own also uh, meth- ways of 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 testing. No, so. So all of these things, all of these options are available sa ating mga kababayan. But again, let's listen to our health experts. If you're symptomatic, if you feel symptoms, isolate agad. And then try to get a test. Um, then we'll work hard to, to get you tested um, immediately um, so that we can confirm whether or not it's Omicron. But you, you, need, to, you need to also uh, avail of the services ng ating telemedicine. Um, you need to avail of the services ng LGUs as well. Thank you very much, Kabsek. Thank you, Dr. Salvani. Thank you. I just like to again emphasize, no, vaccinate, vaccinate, vaccinate. Thank you. Let's go back to you, Sec Rocky. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Sec Carlo. Uh, tanong po mula kay uh, MJ Blanca Flor ng Daily Tribune for you, Sec Malaya, if two policemen will be deployed to each quarantine hotels following uh, President Duterte's directive. Ilan in total ang PMP personnel who will guard the said uh, facilities? Kakayanin po ba daw na manpower ito ng uh, PNP? Uh, yeah. With the permission of Kabsek Nagrade, sir. Yes, go ahead, um, Yusek. Yes. Uh, ang atin pong numero ng mga quarantine facilities ay 297. No? Iba-iba po ang classification niyan. May mandatory quarantine facility, may stringent quarantine facility at mayroon uh, meron din for seafarer. So, 297 times 2 uh, dahil sabi ng Pangulo ay dalawa, that means 594 police officers. So, kakayanin naman po natin ito. No? Uh, meron po tayong tinatawag na mobile force battalion 
na nakatalaga sa NCRPO sa mga district uh, police district offices and mga police stations at yung mga dati po nating kapulisan na naka-assign sa mga checkpoints ay pwede rin pong i-assign ng Philippine National Police sa mga iba't ibang DOT and Bureau of Quarantine accredited quarantine facilities. So, uh, hindi po mahirap on the part of the Philippine National Police to deploy this uh, 594 police officers sa mga quarantine facilities. Opo. Ang follow-up question po niya, uh, kailan daw po magsisimula yung enforcement? Yusef? Yes. Actually, nagsimula na po yung uh, unang naging uh, direktiba ni Secretary Anyo yung random inspection. Uh, December 31 hanggang sa ngayong araw ay nag-random inspection po ang uh, PNP Health Service at ang NCRPO because um, instructions were already uh, given by uh, Secretary Ed Anyo. So, facilities, around 50 have already been uh, randomly inspected by the Philippine National Police. Uh, pero po, since bago lang po ito, uh, bigyan po siguro natin ng isa o dalawang araw ang ating kapulisan para mag-assign ng tao. I would expect baka po bukas ay meron na tayong mga polis na nakatagal na katalaga sa quarantine facilities. Opo. Sek ang uh, tanong po mula kay Jason Rubrico ng SMNI New for uh, UK Malaya, uh, will there be a timeline kung kailan dapat uh, maipapasa ng mga Metro Manila LGU yung po daw kanilang ordinance ukol sa paglimita sa mga galaw ng mga unvaccinated kailan ba ang target na ma-implement ito sa Metro Manila? Okay, base po doon sa MMNPA resolution uh, uh, dito sa regulating the mobility of unvaccinated individuals na alinsunod din naman sa IATF resolution ay uh, they uh, they urge the different local government units to pass the respective ordinance pero wala naman pong uh, nakalagay doon na petsa kung saan kailangan ay naipasa na yung ordinance ang ito so, ang uh, advice po sa amin ay merong tinatawag na uniform ordinance na dinadraft ngayon ang MMDA at ang technical working group para ibigay sa iba't ibang mga konseho uh, para ito ay maipasa bilang ordinance but I would think na given na sa alert level 3 tayo at kailangan kailangan na natin ito ay siguro naman bibilisan ng mga iba't ibang konseho ang pagpasa nitong ordinansa. So baka baka po sa susunod na linggo ay meron na tayong makita ng uh, ordinansa na ipasa kasi syempre dati sa legislative process kailangan dumaan po yan sa proper procedure na nakasaad sa local government code. Thank you Yusak Thank you. Thank you, Yusek Malaya. Thank you. Secondo. Thank you, Yusek Rocky. Thank you, Yusek uh, Malaya. Let's now go to Pia Renada from Rappler. Hi, good afternoon. Um, very quickly before my prop, my questions, my my main questions. Uh, for Yusek Malaya, sir, yung two hundred ninety-seven quarantine facilities is this nationwide or just in NCR? Uh, let me check, no. Uh. But uh, I say this is the list that was given to me by the Bureau of Quarantine. It looks like it's a. Uh, ako nakapaghanda sa tanong mo. <laughs> uh, okay, I have the list now. Uh, this is uh, Metro Manila. It's Metro Manila. So we still have quarantine facilities outside of Metro Manila. So mas madami po ito. And the directive of the president is not limited to. Uh, NCR, it's uh, entire country. So we will also deploy police personnel in the quarantine facilities outside of NCR. And we have enough manpower for that? Y yes, we do. As I mentioned, uh, there's uh, mobile force battalions and mobile force units in every district, province, and region of the country. At doon tayo kumukuha ng mga additional na tao sa mga ganitong uh, public health emergencies and disasters. All right. Um, and then for uh, Cabinet Secretary Nograles, sir, we already saw earlier that the DOT um, revoked accreditation of Burjaya Makati Hotel. Um, but given the president's remarks yesterday, he sounded like he was absolving um, all hotels from any legal liability when it comes to violations of mandatory quarantine. Sir, um, isn't this jumping the gun? And uh, does this mean that other hotels will not be investigated or even Burjaya Makati will not face any legal cases for the breach and quarantine by the by the woman 
Well, first of all, um, cases have already been filed against the uh, personnel, um, the officers of uh, Berjaya. No? Uh, secondly, uh, let's put context no, in uh, the president's uh, statements in the Talk to the People kagabi. Uh, first context was uh, in in the in the light of the physical um, the limits of uh, hotel personnel to physically stop uh, or enforce the law, uh, and it was in that context na limited no yung yung maaring gawin na mga officers or officials or the workers or employees and the manager of the hotel. Given that context na medyo limited no, yung kayang physical enforcement, kaya po kinakailangan ng police. And that's the reason why the President ordered uh, the ILG Secretary Ed Año to ensure that may police personnel tayo to strictly enforce doon sa mga quarantine facilities and isolation facilities natin because of the limits of the employees ng hotel to uh, physically enforce, especially pag naging aggressive na yung um, uh, what do you call this? Quarant the, 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 the person the, the person being quarantined. Um, so no uh, also in that also in that context also in that context um, yung sinasabi rin is that duty bound pa rin no? yung officials of that hotel or quarantine facility to at the very least report any violations of uh, those who are supposed to be under quarantine. And uh, if there is uh, negligence in the part or uh, hindi, hindi ginawa, uh, the omission of the hotel employees or its officers in not reporting. Remember the key word here is yung pagre-report uh, because if you the, the law itself is the notifiable diseases act no so nandun yung responsibilities and obligations to report uh, those who violate uh, particularly so para sa mga quarantine uh, facilities na they're duty bound to at the very least report uh, in this case as filed by the CIDG and the uh, complainants uh, wala talagang pagre-report na ginawa so those are omissions which unfortunately fall under the elements found in the provisions of the law na pinagbabawal na prohibited acts. So Secretary, the President stands corrected. These hotels can be held legally liable for non-reporting. Um, and sir, what, how will the President's uh, remarks last night affect the investigations into hotels who are involved in the absentee quarantine modus? You have to, to you have to go back to the conversation between the Secretary of Justice and the President in the talk to the people, and that was very transparent. Uh, and in that conversation, uh, the President agreed, no? Ang, and then na emphasize niya lang yung limitation ng physical enforcement, lalo na pag naging aggressive na yung magbabayolate ng quarantine. So that's why you need a law enforcer there in order to prevent um, such uh, aggression or such violations because of the limitations nga of these um, employees of the hotel. It does not uh, remove or absolve them of their um, negligence, the omissions of their act, the non-reporting, uh, and in any case, um, the, the, the cases will be filed uh, the cases will be uh, prosecuted, uh, and then it will be up to the judge to decide. Okay. Last question, Secretary. Uh, just further on the recommendation of Dr. John Wong about antigen testing. Sir, will the IATF consider subsidizing antigen testing the way that some other governments do that make it more accessible and affordable to the public, lalo na yung home testing? Uh, this is something that's... Con con uh, consistently being discussed, um, especially in light of this Omicron. Um, and, and again, um, we're looking at uh, different um, options for us, uh, for the national government, for the LGUs, and even for private individuals. 
Again, um, it has to pass through FDA. FDA has to approve. Uh, we have to have our health experts to chime in um, just to make sure, no, and the reason for this is we have to make sure that the tests being used don't give false negatives or even false positives. Diba? So it, it has to pass through this uh, rigorous process uh, with the health experts, the FDA chiming in, the DOH, um, and then obviously uh, the IATF will have to make a decision about uh, increasing uh, the options for testing uh, for our uh, population. Sir, why only now, two years into the pandemic, other countries have very formalized, um, institutionalized protocols on home testing, antigen, and subsidizing antigen test kits. How come we're only doing this now, studying this matter? No, it's something now? that we always consistently study. Naman. It's always something that's consistently on the tables sa IATF. And, but we're always looking at the RT-PCR as a gold standard, remember. Uh, that's the gold standard. Then we allowed antigen testing, no? And then as as the months and as the months go by, there there will be more and more test kits available or options for testing um, in the market, no? Um, and so we also look at what other countries are doing uh, and what sort of home testing uh, kits that they are actually using. Uh, but again, uh, to put it. Again, into context, it's still the RT-PCR that's a gold standard, number one. It's still through RT-PCR that we're e able to do genome sequencing. Diba? Um, all the other test kits won't be able for us to determine what type of variant. No? So under that context, uh, we have the gold standard and we have other testing kits um, coming out in the market that has to pass through FDA, that has to be studied by our health experts. And again, we don't want to give any false negatives out there because that's also dangerous. So uh, point is, it's always consistently being studied by the IATF and our health experts. Um, and, you know, developments are happening uh, every month as we speak with regard to testing. Okay. Thank you, Secretary. Thanks, Pia. Let's go back to you, Sec. Rocky. Yes, thank you, Sec. Carlo. Uh, tanong po mula kay Lanes Capanti ng GMA News Online uh, with uh, religious gathering will religious gatherings included masses be prohibited under alert, alert level 3 areas for amid the rising of COVID-19 cases? Well, based on our current guidelines, uh, we still allow religious gatherings 30% for alert level 3, 30% for fully vaccinated. no. But again, um, the new development right now is uh, itong mga ordinansa na ipapalabas halimbawa ng iba't ibang mga Metro Manila cities and perhaps even in Calabarzon and perhaps in other cities or provinces as well, baka magpapalabas na rin sila ng mga ordinansa nila with regard to limitations sa movement naman ng na mga unvaccinated. But as it stands, the general rule, pag alert level 3 ang lugar, um, then... Um, pag religious gatherings, it's 30% indoors for the fully vaccinated. So yun pa rin po ang sinusundan natin. Um, special, special na lang po yung sa uh, pista ng Black Nazarene, which ayaw nga natin ng super spreader event. So kami ay nakikipag-ugnayan din sa Catholic Church na yung mga misa ay gagawin na lang pong online. Tanong po ni uh, Danes Capanti pa rin, will the President issue an uh, executive order regulating prices of self-test uh, antigen kits as well as Molnupiravir and uh, Paxlovid to make them more cheap and accessible? Um, well, that's something that uh, we will uh, be looking at. Uh, again, uh, as far as FDA is concerned, uh, it has to pass through their regulation. Um, pagdating dito sa mga antigen kits or self-test kits. Uh, as far as Molnupiravir and Paxlovid is concerned, um, I think yung sa Pfizer na Paxlovid, we're still awaiting word from FDA kung meron na po bang um, uh, nag -ano na ba sila if they, if they went to FDA to apply no, for an EUA for, for, that, uh, for Paxlovid. Sa Molnu naman, Molnupiravir, uh, I know may mga LGUs din po na who have already purchased or have already secured. Um, yung sa 
EO, that's something that uh, I will have to refer to the DOH and the health experts to chime in. No? Uh, before the president even signs an EO, kailangan dumaan po yan sa proseso and uh, possibly uh, the DOH will have to um, send its comments uh, with regard to that. Uh, I don't know if uh, Dr. Edsel Salvania would like to add anything from what I just said. Dr. Edsel? Uh, yes, Kabsek. Actually, a lot of these meds, uh, yung like for Molnupiravil, for, for Merck and Paxlovid for Pfizer, um, the uh, the companies have already said that um, at least while nagpa-pandemic, uh, they will minimize lang yung profits from it and they've actually licensed it to several generic um, ano, to generic manufacturers. Now, it's really up to the generic manufacturers, unfortunately, kung magpapatong pa sila on top of that. So we'll see how it goes, but I think ano naman, like with the testing sa RT-PCR and other things, um, I think government naman can make those decisions uh, whether they need to regulate those prices pa. Sa Carnell, uh, susunod pong tanong mula kay Jopal Peleño ng DWIC. Same question po sila ni MJ Balanca Flor ng Daily Tribune. Secretary Dizon and three other cabinet secretaries uh, recommends that uh, no bakuna, no labas policy of Metro Manila mayors must be implemented in the entire country. May decision na po ba upol dito ang IATF at kailan ito may tutupad, may, may patutupad ang follow-up po naman ni Ivan Mayrina dyan ay kung, uh, kung uh, should there be ordinances or will the president issue uh, will the president issue an executive order? May meeting po ang IATF tomorrow and that's one of the possible topics that we will be discussing. Uh, as it stands right now, um, as I mentioned uh, in my opening statement, so far yung Metro Manila Council ay nagkaroon ng isang resolution uh, sila po ay uh, nag, uh, they've come into an agreement uh, na pagkasunduan po nila na maglalabas sila ng kanilang mga ordinansya um, then the Calabarzon also uh, regional task force uh, is also supporting that and um, perhaps even the local government units and the provinces under Calabarzon might also will also come out with their own respective ordinances uh, obviously, then for other LGUs as well, it's it's up to them uh, to decide. Uh, but as far as IATF is concerned, uh, we'll probably talk about it tomorrow sa aming IATF full meeting. Opo. Uh, tanong pa rin po mula kay Ivan Mayrina ng GMA News. Paklarify daw po uh, the President's order to barangay captains uh, to arrest unvaccinated individuals who will go out of their residence. Attorney Cayosa, former president of the I IBP, said, and I quote, walang batayan yung walang batas o ordinansa na nagbabawal na lumabas. Ang uh, covered ng ordinansa ay ang pagpasok sa mga establishments. Police power dapat may basihan sa batas o ordinansa absent. Any crime, walang basihan para mag-aresto. Apo, apo, pag lumabas yung ordinance, then um, I, when the president was speaking about persons in authority, uh, yung barangay kapitan po uh, is considered a person in authority. So sa konteksto po na yun, uh, pag oras na lumabas na ng ordinance, ang isang LGU, halimbawa, uh, dito sa Metro Manila, yung mga cities natin dito, dahil na pagkasunduan na nga po ng uh, Metro Manila Council, uh, mag, uh, maglalabas ng ordinansya ang mga uh, LGUs dito sa Metro Manila, then the, uh, i-ma-enforce na po yan ang ating uh, uh, law enforcement agencies and persons in authority including the barangay kapitan. Opo. Uh, yung tanong po ni uh, Miguel Aguana ng GMA News ay nasagot niya na rin na uh, si Carlo about do sa pila sa, sa uh, swab testing. Salamat po. Thank you, Yusek Rocky. At uh, maraming maraming salamat din po sa ating uh, mga guests. Um, Undersecretary Jonathan Malaya ng DILG and of course si Dr. Edsel Salvania. Mga kababayan, uh, our experience with COVID-19 has shown us that we can contain this disease with prompt, decisive, and measured action on the part of the national government, our local government units, our communities, our families, and ourselves as individuals. This allowed us to overcome the threat posed by the Delta variant, and this will allow us to overcome the challenges posed by the Omicron variant. 
Malinaw po na lahat tayo kailangan kumilos ng may buong pag-iingat. Mask, hugas, iwas, plus ventilation, plus bakuna. Kung may nararamdaman po kayo, immediately, immediately isolate. Mag-home care kung kayo ay may mild disease, lalo na po kung kayo ay fully vaccinated. Ang mga simpleng aksyon ng mga ito ay may impact sa kalusugan ng ating mga kamag-anak, kapitbahay at komunidad. These choices, these steps, and these precautions matter. Piliin natin ang ating kaligtasan. Piliin natin ang ating kalusugan. Now, just as before, we need to be mindful of the welfare of others. Kailangan nating magtulungan at maraming salamat po.